I think that uh, creativity is something that God puts in all of us. Um, for me, it's uh, almost a need to express myself, um, making something out of something else, um, taking time and uh, making time in my schedule to create things, to, to make things. Um, I spent a lot of time not doing that, getting caught up in life and parenting and that sort of thing, and did not honor the need to create that I have inside. Um, I can say that that didn't go well. I was not as happy person as I should have been. I was not uh, as enthusiastic about life when I wasn't honoring that uh, creative spirit that God gave me. So for me, creating means making things, making art. I recently published a children's book that was completely illustrated with miniatures that were all handmade. Um, that was something that I did every week for hours and I felt good when I did it. When I, I got to take something and make something else from it, that was important. That fed me, that uh, really kept me alive and happy. And, and that was, I think that's something that God put there and I had to do in order to get the most out of me. Um, I think that creativity is different for everybody. I honestly believe that everyone is creative. Um, sometimes I talk to people and they say things like, oh, I'm not creative. I was talking to somebody recently who said they, they didn't have a creative bone in their body, but this person actually started and ran their own business. So I was going, well, you did that. <laughs> That's something I couldn't dream of doing. A lot of people get hung up on creativity, being artistic. You know, I, I can't paint, I can't sculpt, whatever. But I think creativity is a lot bigger than that. I think creativity is making something. It's it's uh, cooking or writing or there's there's any way to express yourself creatively. I think it's different for everybody. I think that when you do create something, you do uh, put a little bit of your soul into it too. So I think you actually you can help somebody create something and make something and step beyond where they thought they were and, and do more than what they thought they could, that's a great way for them to grow also. And, and helping someone there is an awesome thing. I'm Aaron, and this is what creativity means to me. Good morning. Aaron's got some of his books uh, out in the cafe area if you're interested in checking those out. And uh, let me just start by asking you a question. What are you dreaming about? Or are you even dreaming? So as you can obviously tell from that video, today's element is creativity. And creativity to me is almost like part two of the vocation element that we covered two weeks ago. So if you end up feeling inspired by today's message, somehow you missed uh, the vocation message, go back and listen to it sometime this week. We, we, post on our, we post our weekly videos, messages on our website, and they're on our YouTube channel, or you can listen to them on podcasts. Uh, all of those are up there on the screen behind me. The word vocation is Latin for calling, and so vocation is, is really about what we are called to do in the world, but creativity is really about how we do what we are called to do in the world. And at the end of the message on vocation, two weeks ago, I, asked, I had you all stand up and ask you to imagine the kind of world you'd like to see. And then I said, vocation is simply going out and doing what it takes to make that happen. Um, but how we do what it takes to make that happen can feel overwhelming to most of us, okay? Um, how do we move from imagining to implementing, and that's where creativity comes into play. Creativity is simply putting our God-given imagination into action. It, it's a powerful tool that God has given to each and every person on this planet. This is obviously my beautiful wife, Andrea, being videoed by Lana, who's being videoed by our camera. It just gets really creepy after that, okay. <laughs> But Andrea is putting her God-given imagination into action by using the artistic gifts that God has given her. And she'll be creating this painting. She started it in first service, do it this service, and she'll uh, do it again, c continue it, hopefully finish it up in the last service. We'll take it home. She'll finish it up. We'll frame it. We'll bring it back next week. And we'll offer it uh, to the highest bidder. And 100% of what that person bids will go to one of our common good 
uh, projects. I'm guessing it's going to go to David in Uganda. That's my guess, okay? So come back next week and see how this works out. But as you see Andrea painting up here, as Aaron said in that video, you might already be thinking, you know, Rabbi Gene, God didn't give me any artistic gifts, so this message really isn't for me, right? No. Here's what God gave everyone. God gave everyone an imagination. And so if I can be bold enough, I want to say that the premise of creativity is that if you can imagine something and you can, then it's possible to make it happen. And so creativity is simply putting what you imagine into action. And if I have correctly defined creativity, then everyone on this planet is considered a creative. And to get you thinking about this reality, I want to show you a short video. And maybe you... Maybe you have gotten on the YouTube channel for uh, People Are Amazing. Anybody? You should, okay? These people I'm going to show you just imagined something, and then they went out and did it. Here it is. Ridiculous. Watch the back flip. Now the ball. Now, look, here, I got some picture. Here's some other people putting their God-given imagination into action. This person imagined a beautiful garden along a winding river. My wife could do this easily right there. This guy imagined an awesome car made out of Legos. These people imagine bodies covered with colorful tattoo art. Architect Caesar Pelli imagined these twin towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. A man named Walt Disney imagined a family fantasy playground called Disneyland. A man named Steve Jobs imagined helpful devices like these. Dr. Ramon Damadian imagined a life-saving body scanner. NASA scientists imagined someone walking on the moon. Imagine that. 
And now Tesla and SpaceX founder uh, Elon Musk uh, imagines the first human space colony on Mars. I think he'll do it. I really do. God gave everyone an imagination, including you. So what kind of world are you imagining? Creativity is simply putting your God-given imagination into action. Here's the best part. When we put our God-given imagination into action, we actually become co-authors with God in writing his epic grand story called history, his story. And this is so awesome to grasp because at its core, imagination in action is really just about storytelling. When God was sitting around in eternity past, he first imagined an epic story. And then he put his imagination into action by creating everything that we see in this universe, beginning in Genesis 1-1. Bereshit bara Elohim ve'et ha'shamayim ve'et ha'eretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I love this quote by Jewish author Muriel Ruckeser. It's, she, this is what she says. The universe is made of stories, not of atoms. Don't you love that? And when God finished putting his imagination into action, he rested. And then he handed off the creative baton to us. And he said, you guys take it from here. What kind of world do you imagine? What kind of story do you want to tell? And like it or not, good or bad, we have created quite a story, haven't we? We have created quite a world. Think about the world, how it existed when God first handed off the creative baton to Adam. There, were, there was no infrastructure, no inventions, no stories yet to tell. Now think about the world that exists today. This is our creative contribution to the story. And whether our contribution is for the common good or for the common bad, God set things up in such a way that we all get to co-author the story with him. And in that regard, we are all creative storytellers. Creativity is putting our God-given imagination into action, and creativity is an important element here at Cornerstone because since it's now our time in history to imagine the future, we want to use our imagination in such a way to help God's story for the common good. We want to bring beauty, and we want to bring meaning, and we want to bring life and usefulness and joy and just plain fun to the world like Walt Disney did. You know, Disney was a devout man of faith, and he had a vivid imagination, and he used his God-given imagination to make inspirational animations that we all love that tell the repeated story of good's triumphant victory over evil. What kind of world do you imagine? What kind of story do you want to tell? Imagination is about storytelling. But storytelling is about shaping the future for the common good. And I want to drill down a little more on this shaping point because there's a direct relationship between the biblical Hebrew word for imagination and the act of shaping or forming. First of all, our English word doesn't come from the Hebrew. The English word imagination means the image making power of the mind, the act of mentally creating or reproducing an object not previously perceived, and the ability to create such images. In other words, in the true sense of the word imagination, it really means not only the ability to imagine something new in our minds, but the ability to go out and make it happen. Imagination is image making. And if we can imagine something, even if it seems impossible to us, it is possible to make it happen. Think about little Orville Wright saying to his mom, Mama, someday I'm going to fly. And his mom saying something like, Oh, Orvi, you have quite an imagination. Humans aren't built to fly. Now, run along, help your brother Wilbur pick up the horse poop, you know. 
Okay, there is no one single word in biblical Hebrew for imagination. The word imagination itself is more of a modern word. But the best ancient word in my mind that captures the full idea of imagination leading to implementation is the Hebrew word yetzar, which comes from the Hebrew root yatsar. And it's translated in your Bibles as to form or to shape or to fashion. And the first time we see yatsar is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when the Lord God formed Yatsar, a man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. This word is also used to describe the work of a potter or other craftsman, and it creates this beautiful word picture of molding or squeezing physical material into a functional form like a human being or a clay pot or a farming tool. But what's really awesome about this word is that it has prophetic or visionary features to it. In other words, first comes the imagination or the idea, then comes the implementation. For instance, in this passage in Genesis 2, God first imagined man's image in his mind, and then he grabbed a handful of dirt, and he squeezed and shaped it into that image. And just in case you think I'm making this stuff up, this is exactly how Psalm 139.16 presents this idea. God's eyes saw my unformed body. I mean, think about that. God sees our physical bodies before they are formed. He imagines us before he creates us. But God's imagination doesn't stop there because the passage goes on to say, all the days ordained for me. That word ordained is yatsar. All the days formed, all the days shaped for me, all the days fashioned for me, squeezed out for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Before we were ever conceived in our mother's womb, God not only imagined our shape, he also imagined what kind of life we would live. And then he put his imagination into action. Now here's a, the, the even more awesome part, okay? We are all made in the image of God. We are all made in the imagination, the image making of God. And so like God, we have the image-making power of our mind. We can act mentally to create or reproduce an object not previously perceived. And then we can go out and create that image. We're all image makers. And if we can imagine something, then hypothetically, it's possible to make it happen. Let me show you, okay? In Genesis chapter 11, a group of people begin to imagine the impossible, in verse 3, it says, they said to one another, here's what I imagine. Let's make some bricks and bake them thoroughly, and they use bricks instead of stone and tar and mortar. Okay, that's not the impossible part. Here's the impossible part. And then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Now, I don't know. You, know. you know how my mind thinks, so I ask questions. It's not recorded here, but don't you think someone in that crowd shouted out, you've got to be kidding, right? This has never been done. What you are suggesting is impossible. You're just a bunch of fools. Has anyone ever said something like that to you? Or have you ever said something like that to someone else? So look what happens. The Lord comes down and sees the city and the tower people were bidding and building, and he says, if as one people speaking in the same language they've begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. God seems to think that what they are imagining is possible, and so he puts the kibosh on it. And I think this is what Jesus has in mind when he says in Matthew chapter 17, 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds on this planet, you can say to this mountain, move from here 
to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I'm not aware of a single documented case when a human being moved a literal mountain by just speaking to it. I know some of you are going to go home and Google it, and you're going to find you know, several places where somebody said it happened, but trust me, it hasn't happened. I'm also not aware of any examples in the Bible where anybody, any human ever spoke and a mountain moved. And Jesus certainly didn't do this when he walked the earth as a man. So I don't think Jesus is trying to give us a formula for moving mountains. So if you're in the excavation business, this is not a shortcut to save money. He's merely emphasizing that when we mix our God-given imagination with even just a small amount of faith, anything is possible. Is he guaranteeing that it will happen? No, but I can tell you this much. It will never happen if you don't try. A wise person once said, if you aim at nothing, that's exactly what you'll end up with. So Andrew and I weren't here last week because we went to California. It was my brother's 70th birthday, and we went to visit my mom. My mom's going to be 90 next, 91 next month and praise god she's doing great she's still driving she's still staying pretty active but last year at her request we moved her into a retirement facility and when we were there last week they have a respite apartment for family to come stay while you visit your your mom or your your dad and so we actually stayed in what in the respite apartment in the retirement facility and uh and so we <laughs> ignore the lady the painter. <laughs> yeah, I'm a classy guy. I take her to all the great spots. <laughs> Buddy was with us, so he, he liked it. Okay. And so, you know, we ate and we talked and we interacted with all the, the people living there. One thing that's really obvious is that when you get older... And particularly if you move into a facility like that, your world begins to shrink very quickly. It narrows down. It becomes very limited. You, you spend most of your time in that building. You eat most of your meals in that building. And almost all your socialization happens in that building. And because of this narrowing and limited existence, many of the residents in that facility have these very expressionless faces and sagging postures because they've just stopped imagining a brighter future. They've basically given up hope. And you think about it, hope isn't about what's taking place today. Hope is about what will take place tomorrow. Who hopes for what they already have? Isn't that what he, the book of Hebrews says? And so for many, they can only imagine tomorrows being more lonelier and more sadder. And people who lose hope stop dreaming. Most of you know that we work with Reintegra here to help uh, rehabilitate uh, human tra trafficking victims in Mexico City. One of the things you hear often from these victims when they first arrive at the safe house is that sometime during their captivity, they stopped dreaming. They simply gave up hope for a brighter future. But one of the markers of their recovery is that they will start dreaming or imagining a better future again. And you've heard some of the incredible inspirational stories of these brave ladies who are now some lawyers, some nurses, some entrepreneurs, these beautiful, courageous, and creative women have become storytellers by putting their God-given imagination into action to co-author co the grand story along with God. It's a beautiful sight to behold. It's one of the, the best things we do here at Cornerstone. It's why I travel to Mexico City whenever I can when these girls graduate. It's just nothing short of inspiring. There's nothing better than to help someone who's lost hope begin to dream 
once again. So let me ask you the question again. When did you stop dreaming? When did you stop imagining a better future for yourself or for the world? So many people, you know, since June 20th, I think, is the day that kind of handed the leadership baton off to Brian. And so many people have come up to me since that day to congratulate me on retiring. And I said, I don't know who's spreading fake facts like that. But let me tell you something. I'm not planning on gearing down anytime soon. In fact, I am gearing up. In fact, no, actually, I am geared up. You know, and I believe my, boast, my, my most creative days are still in front of me. I'm going to continue to put my imagination into action to help shape God's story for good as long as I can. What about you? Is your world becoming narrower, more limited? Are you winding down or are you gearing up? Have you stopped dreaming? If so, what, what caused you to stop dreaming? Did something happen that you lost your faith? Or have you become discouraged or wounded in some way? Did someone tell you that what you're dreaming is impossible? Do you have an impossible dream? Of course, that makes me think of a song. And when I think of a song... You have to sing it with me, right? <laughs> Come on, let's sing this together, okay? To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to write the unwritable wrong. Come on, louder. To love pure and chase from afar, to try when our arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or cause to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure when I became a motivational speaker. <laughs> but if you don't stop smoking weed on that couch, you're going to end up in a van down by the river eating government <laughs> cheese. Okay. That's a message for Boulder, right? <laughs> All right, think about everything I've said up to this point. Watch this video. He should stop dreaming. It starts in my mind. Just me and the game. I don't play against opponents. I play against the odds. against all those who say I'm not tall enough, not strong enough, not fast enough, not good enough, not talented enough. Well, it's not their fight to fight, it's mine.
I am determined to make the impossible possible. I did not choose where I was born, but I can choose where I will be. It's my dream. It's my challenge. It's my chance. It's my life. It's my faith. It's my strength. It's my passion. It's my desire. It's my effort. It's my sacrifice. It's my moment. It's my game. It's my world. What kind of world are you imagining? What kind of story do you want to tell? Creativity is putting your God-given imagination into action. Imagination is about storytelling, and storytelling is about shaping the future for the common good. So this week starts Rosh Hashanah, which is really the feast of Yom Teruah, the blowing of the trumpets. But it's a, it's a day that we can mark, right? We can days of mark as a new year, a, a, be, a fresh beginning. From that point on, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, they call the days of awe, time to reflect about what we did last year, and where we fell short, so that this year we can make a change. And so I encourage you to enter into that this feast period with that kind of a heart. Let me let me just finish with one interesting passage. You know, all the prophets speak about things that are going to happen in what's called the last days, the end of days. The last chapter of this great epic story that you and I are in. And um, the prophet Joel says something interesting in chapter 2, verse 28. He says, and afterward, meaning in those last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And listen to what he says. Your sons and daughter will prophesy prophesy that's looking forward right your old men will dream dreams it's looking forward your young men will see visions it's looking forward even on my servants both men and women I will pour out my servant in those days it's interesting the first time we see that Hebrew word Yatsar show up for a human being it's for a craftsman and it's says that he is filled with the Holy Spirit. These aren't your thoughts. This is not your imagination. This is God's imagination dreaming through you. That's what God wants to do. He wants to dream through us. He's not done creating. He's just using us to do it. And so I pray that as we sing this next song, that you can embrace the words as a prayer. Awaken my soul. Come awake to hunger, to seek, to thirst. Awaken first love. Come awake. Do as you did first. Remember those days when you first believed how excited you were to change the world. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Come, wake me from my sleep. May that be your prayer. Let's stand up. Father, open our hearts. Wake us up. If we've been wounded in some way, we've given up hope, we've stopped dreaming, turn those dreams back on, Father. Help us believe the impossible again might be able to co-write this incredible story along with you. Thank you for this privilege that we have. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach is in Jesus' name.